Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. For today's video, we're going to have two topics under functions which are representing functions and evaluating functions. So the learning competencies that we're going to have in these topics are we are going to represent real-life situation using functions including piecewise functions and then we're going to identify the domain and the range of a function and then we are going to evaluate the function. But I just want to give a background to everyone that we're going to discuss this as simple as, as possible so that we can easily understand this one. Now, let's talk about first relation. So before we can actually uh, get the this definition of function, of course, we have to have the definition of relation. So when we say relation, it is a set of ordered pairs of real numbers denoted by the symbol x, y. So for as long as we have the ordered pair x and y, we call it as a relation. So when we say x, it's actually the, uh, the x value and then we have the y value. And what do we see usually? When we are plotting points in the Cartesian plane, we should have x and y to plot a point, right? So example, let's have this set. So we have the set 2, 3, negative 1, 5, 4, negative 2, 9, 9, 0, negative 6. All the first numbers for each pair uh, are what we call the x values, okay? While the second numbers are what we call the y values. And then you have to put this into your mind that x value is actually independent and y is dependent to the value of x. So you cannot actually solve y here without the value of x. Now, so of course, x values, we call them as the domain. So the domain is the set of all x values in the relation. Just like here, the domain will be the first numbers. We have uh, 2, negative 1, 4, 9, and 0. Now, so those are what we call the domain of this function or relation, right? So when we say range, it's the set of all y values in a relation. Just like here, in this set or in this relation, so as you can see all the y values, 3, okay? So 3, so 3, 5, negative 2, 9, and negative 6. So if we are going to order them in increasing order, so there, we will be starting first with the negative value. So... The lowest va the number the integer with the lowest value here is negative six. For all we know, the higher the number for negative, the lower the value. So negative six followed by negative two, three, five, nine. So do you understand domain and range? So for every relation, we have what we call the domain and the range. When we say domain is the set of all x values, while when we say range is the set of all y values. And then next. Identify the domain and range for each relation. So for number 1, we have the set 6, negative 2, negative 1, negative 5, negative 6, negative 1, and 0, 9. So of course, the first uh, numbers, okay, we call them as the domain or uh, the x value. So we have negative 6, negative 1, 0, and 6, if you are going to order them. Then for the range, we have the second numbers, negative 5, negative 2, negative 1, and Nines. And then number 2, we have the set negative 2, 1, negative 3, 0, negative 4, 0, and negative 2, 7. So all the first numbers, we call them the domain or the x values. Just remember this when you're writing the domain or the range. If there's a repeated element, just simply write it once. Just like here, negative 2 was used uh, twice, no? So therefore, we will just be writing it once. So we have negative 2, negative 3, and negative 4. And then for the range, we have 0, 1, and 7. Okay, so that's how you will identify domain and range. So as you can see, for the range, we have two zeros. So therefore, we're going to identify only it as ones, ones rather. Okay? And then let's have ways to indicate a relation. So for number one, we have the ordered pair form. The typical examples that we've discussed earlier, or the examples that we've discussed earlier, then for number two, we have the arrow diagram or mapping. So for the arrow diagram or mapping, we have, of course, two columns and then each column is paired to the other one. So if you are, you would like to identify the first value of S, it's 5, and then we have the range which is 9 or Y value, 9, and so on and so forth. Each one is paired to Y, okay? And then other than those, we have also open sentence, the typical algebraic sentence that we know, which is y is equal to 3x squared plus 1. In this case, y can also be written the function of x for functions only. But for relation, it goes like that. And then for the set notation form, it, 
is like this. Let's say you are going to identify the domain and they are hidden here. So for the domain here now, we have x and then you will be reading this as such that f such that x is at most 0 or greater than or equal to 0. So what do we mean by that? All the numbers or integers that are greater than 0 and equal to 0, including 0 itself, 0 and up are what we call the domain or elements of the domain. And then for the range, we have y such that y less than 0. So it means all the numbers or values that are less than 0 are the range of this specific relation. So that's what we mean when we say so set notation form. And then we, we also have the tabular form. So for all you know, when you are in junior high school, when you are about to graph, Okay, so you are using this tabular method or tabular form for you to identify the point that you're going to plot. So in this case, all the elements in the first row, we call them x values or the domain. And all the elements in the second row, we call them range or the y values. Okay, and then of course, we have the graphical form. So just like this, we have parabola. And then we have the relation y is equal to 1 half quantity x minus 3 square minus 4. Okay? So those are the six ways to indicate relation. Then, we already know what function, uh, one relation is when it's a relation is of or ordered pair, x and y. So let's continue with the function. Okay? So when you say function, it's actually the input process and output. So there, the x value will, uh, will serve as the input for in you can easily identify or solve for the value of y through a process or some algebraic techniques uh, to solve for the output, which is the y. So you're going to have the input as x, and then do it's a, uh, the process that we call, uh, that we are going to use is, here is evaluating functions, and then that's the process. And then we will have the output y, which is, or also the value of the function f of x. So it's like when you are taking a picture, of course, when you take a picture, it will be processed using computer, and then after that, it will be printed. But some in the, in the modern age, we're not having or uh, anymore the printed pictures rather, so they are just being uh, res uh, restored in our phone, right? Or any storage, or digital storage. So when we say function, guys, it's not just enough that we have unordered pair X and Y just like for relation, because function is also relation, but not all relation that all relations are function. So in this case, there's another condition that we have to take note for function, which is no two distinct pairs have the same first elements. So it means that there will there must be no repeated x values or elements of the domain. Just for just the first the, just the x values, not the y. So for y, if it's repeated many times, it's okay. But for s, it's not okay. Okay, that's just the additional condition for it to become a function for the relation to become a function, okay? And then, so let's have the following function or not. Just remember that there must no first elements that are going to be repeated when we say function. So in this case, we have the set 2, 3, negative 1, 5, 4, negative 2, 9, 9, and 0, negative 6. So as you can see here, okay, so the x values or the domain, we have 2, negative 1, 4, 9, and 0. Just inspect the first element if there are no repeated elements. So in this case, all the first elements for x values are unique, so therefore we can say that this one is a function. How about for the second one? Just inspect the first or the x values or the domain. If there are no repeated elements, therefore it's a function. In this case, 2 is repeated twice. Again, we don't care about why. What we care about is the x value, or the x values rather. Now, so we can say that this is not function because 2 is repeated twice in the first element. Okay? So that's how you will identify function or not. So we don't care about y for as long as the x values are not repeated. Okay? Then which of the following is an example of a function? So for the first one, we have 1, negative 4, 0, negative 8, negative 4, negative 2, and 9, 9. So in this case, as you can see, all the first values are unique. So therefore we can say that this one is a function. And then for the second one, we have 4, 1, 0, 1, negative 5, 1, 4, 0, 10, negative 10, 5. So as you can see, there are no repeated elements. Okay, in the first, rather, I'm sorry, we have this back this thoroughly. No, there are repeated elements for y's, but not, and also for 
x, so which is 4. So therefore, this is not a function because of that. And then the third one, we have 1, 1, negative 1, 1, negative 7, 1, 11, 1, 0, 1. So as you can see, we just need to inspect the first elements. If there are no repeated first elements, therefore, we call it as a function. So in this case, so no repeated first elements, therefore, we can say that this one is a function. Okay? Next, is this a function? Let's have this arrow diagram or mapping. Alright, so for us to be able to understand this, we should have our order. For the first one is 1, 0, followed by 4, negative 2, followed by 5, 6, followed by 3, 4, and the last one, 2, and 2. Okay? For us to inspect, there must be no repeated first elements or in this column. Okay, in this column. Now, so if you're going to rewrite them, we will have 1, 0, 2, 0, 2, 2, 3, 4, 4, negative 2, and 5, 6, so... As you can see, there are no repeated first elements. So therefore, we can say that this is a function. And this function is what we call one-to-one -one function because x elements are paired to unique y elements. So that's why this one is one-to-one. -one. So when we say one-to-one -one function, there are no repeated x values and y values. So just like what you, what you, what you see below. Okay? Two and negative two are two different numbers or integers they are not the same so this one is what we call one-to-one -one function because of that and then next is this a function so let, let's have nine zero eight one and then seven three six uh three then six seven then lastly five and five is this a function so it's not a function because six was assigned to both three and seven so therefore it means that 6 is repeated twice. So, and this one is not a function. Rather, it's just what we call, uh, it's just what we call, we just call it as one to many. So, when we say one to many, it's not a function. Rather, it's just simply a mere relation. Okay? And then, let's have the this one. So, we have the arrow diagram form, 5, 3, 2, 3, 4, 3, 6, 3, 8, 3. Is this a loud teacher? Yes. So, as you can see, 3 was assigned to all the x values. But x, there are no repeated x values. That's why this is, this is what we call function. And this function is what we call many to one function. So, when we say many to one function, it's not actually a, a many to one function is actually a function. Not, a sim not simply a relation, okay? So if it's one-to-many, it's not a function. It's If it's one-to-one, -one, it's a function. And many-to-one, it's also a function. All right? So is this a function? A relation is a function if its graph passes the vertical line. Test. So what if the given is in graphical form? So how can you easily identify if it's a function or not? So we have what we call now the vertical line test. So what must be the condition in using the vertical line test? All vertical lines must intersect the graph once, only once, not twice, not twice. Okay? So just like the, let's have the following. In the first graph, if we are going to draw many vertical lines, will, all, will it only touch the graph at once? Yes. So as you can see, all the vertical lines touch the graph at once. So therefore, we call this as a uh, function because it, pa it passed the vertical line test. And then how about the second? So in this case, okay, this is still allowed. But here, as you can see, the vertical line passes through the graph thrice and also here, here twice. So therefore, this is not a function because it did not pass the vertical line test. And then let's have the third one. We have this. If we are going to draw many vertical lines here, will it be a function? Yes, of course, because as you can see, all the vertical lines touches the graph at all the vertical lines touch the graph at exactly once. And then how about the last one? Let's draw many vertical lines. So as you can see, if we're going to draw many vertical lines, okay, um, as you can see the vertical lines pass through the graph twice. So therefore, this is not a function because it did not pass the vertical line test. So did you understand that? So if you have questions, most especially to my students, please, uh, don't hesitate to ask questions to me. I'll be more than willing to assist you. And then let's add the summary of graphs. 
of common function. The first one is what we call constant function, what, while the second one is identity function. The third one is absolute value function, radical function, quadratic, and cubic. So we're going to have these types of functions in the coming weeks. Okay? So let's have the function notation f of x equals 6x squared minus 2x plus 15. So as you can see, okay, so we have f of x equals 6x squared minus 2x plus 15. This is a function notation. So we're in f. This means that the right-hand side is a function called f. While x, this means that the right-hand side has the variable x in it. So we can also use any other letters for x, like r, t, and y. And f of x, just remember, this is the range also, or the value of the function, because you cannot solve y or the range or the element of the range without using the value of x. So just like here, for us to be able to solve for y, we have to have a unit value of x for us uh, the, what the, we need to substitute in the given function. Okay. Next, let's have evaluating a function. So rule in evaluating a function, just replace every x in the function f of x with the given replacement value. So it means when we say evaluating, there is a specific value wherein you're going to substitute it to the specific function for us to be able to solve the function or the value of y. So in that value is the value of x, which is also what we call the replacement value of x. Then, of course, we are going to apply some algebraic techniques to simplify the resulting numerical expression. So solve for the function at a given value. For the first one, evaluate the function f of x equals x squared plus 3x minus 2 for each replacement value of x. For letter A, we have negative 1. For letter B, we have four values of x here. We have negative 1, 0, 3, and negative 2. Let's solve them one by one so that you'll know the process of evaluating functions. For number 1, so we have f of x equals x squared plus 3x minus 2, wherein we have x is equal to negative 1. So the first thing is the replacement, the value that we have is negative 1. So therefore, we are going to substitute negative 1 to the given function. So here we will have negative 1 squared plus 3 times negative 1 minus 2. So this is being read now as f of negative 1 equals negative 1 squared plus 3 times negative 1 minus 2. And then the next thing that we're going to do, we will be simplify this specific expression with exponent 2. So it means negative 1 will be multiplied twice to itself. So negative 1 times negative 1 is equal to positive 1. While this, 3 times negative 1 is equal to negative 3. And then we did not do anything with negative 2. That's why we will bring it down and it's negative 2. Then just simply use your calculator if you can, or if you can do it mentally, it's 1 minus 3 minus 2, simply negative 4. So f of negative 1 is equal to negative 4, as simple as that. So if you have questions regarding this, please don't hesitate to ask me, okay? I'll be more than willing to ask this. So let's have another one to B. f of x is equal to x squared plus 3x minus 2, and the given replacement value is 0. So the first step that we're going to do now is we are going to substitute 0 to the given function just like this. So f of 0 is equal to 0 squared plus 3 times 0 minus 2. So we will now have 0 squared. So if we're going to multiply 0 to itself, why 0 times 0 is just simply 0. Then 3 times 0 is 0. Just remember that whatever multiply to 0, the answer is always 0. And then we did not do anything with negative 2. That's why we'll just simply bring it down. So 0 times 0 plus 0 minus 2 is just simply negative 2. What will remain is just negative 2. Therefore, f of 0 is equal to negative 2. Okay? Now let's have 1.c. f of x is equal to x squared plus 3x minus 2. And of course, the given replacement value is 3. So the next thing that we're going to do, we are going to substitute the value of x, which is 3. Okay, f of 3 is equal to 3 squared plus 3 times 3 minus 2. The first thing that we're going to do, simplify this one. 3 squared is just simply 9, or 3 times 3 times 3 is equal to 9. And then, of course, this one, 3 times 3 is equal also to 9, and then we will bring down negative 2. So 9 plus 9 minus 2 is just simply 16. So therefore, f of 3 is equal to 16. So I hope that you can follow with the discussion here. Okay, let's have letter D. f of x is equal to x squared plus 3x minus 2, wherein x is equal to negative 2. Okay, 
So f of x is equal to x squared plus 3x minus 2. So just simply substitute the given values, which is negative 2 here. And then after that, simplify each one. So we're in negative 2 squared or negative 2 times negative 2. When you are multiplying 2 negative, the answer is positive 4. Okay, and then we have 3 times negative 2, which is negative 6. And then negative 2, just bring it down because we did not do anything about it. Okay, and then now let's have this. F of negative 2 is equal to negative so that's already our final answer, which is negative 4. Okay, I hope that's clear. Now let's have number 2. F of x is equal to 2x squared minus 3x plus 6. We're in. We have the given replacement value, which is negative 2. Okay, so here we will have f of x equals 2x squared minus 3x plus 6. Just put the replacement value of negative 2. We will now have f of 2 is equal to 2 times negative 2 squared negative minus 3 times negative 2 plus 6. So, Simplify this first, okay? Negative 2 to multiply to itself, it will become positive 4. Minus, or rather, it will be now plus because negative 3 times negative 2 is just simply positive 6 plus 6. Just bring down positive 6. Then lastly, 2 times 4 is 8 plus 6 plus 6. So we will have an answer of 20. So f of negative 2 is equal to 20, okay? Now let's have number 3, f of k is equal to 6k squared minus 4k plus 7. In this case, just simply give the replacement value or substitute the replacement value wherein x is a. Okay, so k is a. So f of k is equal to 6k squared minus 4k plus 7. Substitute a it will be now f of a is equal to 6a squared minus 4a plus 7. So your final answer is this. Because the value of k is not actually a number or any value, it's also another variable just simply replace. Okay, if you will be covering this type of example. Okay, next, let's have number four. F of x is equal to negative x squared minus 3x plus 5. And the given replacement value is negative 1. So just simply replace all the values of x to negative 1. So f of negative 1 now will be negative times negative 1 cubed minus 3 times negative 1 plus 5. So we will be simplifying this first, wherein we have negative 1 cube. Okay. So negative 1 cube means you will be multiplying negative 1 to itself twice. Okay, one, negative 1 times negative 1 is positive 1 times negative 1. So you will have an answer of negative 1. Then we have another negative here. Just bring it down with the answer of negative 1. Plus, it will be plus because negative 3 times negative 1 is positive 3 plus 5. So, negative times negative here will be positive 1 plus 3 plus 5. So, you will be having an answer of 9. Okay? Next, let's have number 5. f of x is equal to s cubed plus 2x squared minus 4x plus 1. And the given replacement value is 1. So, just simply replace x to 1. So, you will now have f of 1 is equal to 1 cubed plus 2 times 1 square minus 4 times 1 plus 1. So net 1 cubed or 1 times 1 times 1 is just simply 1. And then just bring down 2. 1 square is just simply 1 as well. Negative 4 times 1 is negative 4 plus 1. Just bring down positive 1. Now lastly, simplify 2 times 1. So 2 times 1 is 2 minus 4 plus 1. And then combine all together, okay, 1 plus 2 minus 4 plus 1 is just simply 0. So that's already our final answer here. Okay, now let's have number 6. F of m is equal to 2m cubed minus 6m squared plus 5. Then we have the given replacement value of negative 2. So we will just be substituting f of negative 2 is equal to 2 times negative 2 cubed minus 6 minus times minus 2 or negative 2 squared plus 5. Just remember that we have to simplify first this. Okay? So negative 2 cubed is negative 8, and then negative 2 squared is 4. Okay? Just bring down 2, negative 6, and 5. Okay? Then the next thing is simplify each. So 2 times negative 8 is negative 16, and negative 6 times 4 is negative 24. Bring down 5. So negative 16 minus 24, okay? is 40. Negative 40 plus 5 is negative 35. That's already our final answer. 
Now let's have number 7. What's the value of f of a? f of a is equal to a squared minus 7a plus 10 over a minus 2 when a is equal to negative 1. So the first thing that we're going to do, we will be substituting the values here. And then the idea, if it's a fraction of rational, just simply simplify first the numerator and then the denominator, then divide. So when you say fraction, it means division. Okay? So negative 1 squared is just simply 1. Then negative 7 times negative 1 is positive 7. Then bring down 10. Then in below, it's negative 1 minus 2, negative 3. Then 1 plus 7 plus 10 is 18. Divided by negative 3, your final answer will be f of negative 1 equals negative 6. Okay? Do you have any questions under, uh, about evaluation? Great. Now let's have some problems or applications about functions. Okay? Number 1, the volume V of the box is defined by the function V is equal to EQ, where e is the length of an edge. What must be the length of the edge of the box if its volume is 64 cubic millimeters? So let's say this is a box. This is a perfect box. So in this box, as you can see, we are solving for the edge, which is represented by E. Alright, and the given volume of this or the capacity is 64 milli cubic millimeters because it's cube. Then let's solve for this one given the formula for the volume of a cube, which is V is equal to E cube. So this is the function that we have here, and then the volume is 64 cubic millimeters. That's the given that we have. All right? So substitute to the volume, which is 64 cubic millimeters, is equal to E cubed. So then the next thing that we're going to do here is we have to extract the cube root of this so that we can omit 3. So cube root of 3, E, e cubed is just simply E. And then here... Since this is an equation, just remember that you have what whatever you do in the um uh, in the uh, in the side, dog in the other side, you have to do it also in the other side. So the, if we extracted the root in this side or cube root, we have to extract also the cube root here. So this will be cancelled. And on your calculator, just look for cube root of sixty four. Just dial that, you will be getting the answer or n cube root of sixty four and n just change it to three. Okay. So, cube root of 64 is just 4 millimeters, okay? So, therefore, the edge is 4 millimeters. So, this is now your final answer. We hope that you can follow. The number 2, a car has traveled a distance of 42 kilometers in 3 hours. Find the speed of the car, hence the function that models the speed is S is equal to D over T, Okay? So in this case, okay, we have the speed formula and then we're just looking for the speed of the car, which is d over t. So s is equal to d over t and the distance is 42 kilometers and the uh, time is 3 hours. Just simply substitute this. We will have s is equal to 42 over 3 or 43 kilometers over 3 hours. So just simply divide 42 divided by 3 is just 4 in. So, the answer now will be 14 kilometers per hour. So, this will serve as our final answer. So, that's it for representing and evaluating function. I hope that you learned a lot. Please don't forget to hit the subscribe button. And then, so that you can support my channel. And then, you can support the students that are always watching and supporting my channel. Okay, so thank you so much for listening. If you have questions, most especially to my students, please don't hesitate to ask me. Alright, so good day everyone and see you next in the, in the next video.